such as boycotts and pickets, which would become prevalent during the civil rights movement. So, you know, we're not new to this, we're true to this. Welcome back to the Diasporian, or if this is your first time watching, welcome. We're back at one of my favorite places, the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, also known as NAMAC, better known as the Blacksonian. My name is Nikki. Today, we will be going through the section called Making a Way Out of No Way, which is located in, I know it's backwards, the community galleries on level L3. This is one of my favorite exhibits of the museum. If you haven't already watched my first favorite exhibit, I will link it below. I'll also put it in the little thing up here that says, um, you know, suggested videos. You can watch that one first, or you can watch this one and then watch that one. It doesn't really matter, but stay tuned. Girl, definitely almost walked right into that, uh, into that glass. This video is probably, that's playing in the background, is probably not going to let me be great. But here we have the overview of making a way out of no way. So it says, how do you make a way out of no way? For generations, African Americans worked collectively to strive and thrive in the midst of racial oppression through education, religious institutions, businesses, the press, and voluntary associations, black men and women created ways to serve and strengthen their communities. They established networks of mutual support, cultivated leadership, and improved social and economic opportunities. They also developed a tradition of activism that paved the way for broader social change. Please, put some respect on our names. Actually, y'all ain't even got to, because we put respect on our own names. So how about that? So when we hit this first corner, we have the section on religion, which they have here called Foundations of Faith. And then we have here the Nation of Islam, Muslim Americans. Once we go a little further, as y'all know, African Americans are a very spiritual, very religious people, clearly of multiple faiths, but this is something that, you know, has gotten us through the times and contributes to the resilience of us as a people. On the right side, we're not going into this section today, but this is the African Americans in the military. And then in the middle here is power of place. Just exploring the different um, communities in America that were predominantly black. Now we're approaching the section on education in Making a Way Out of No Way. African Americans managed to obtain education for their children by pooling their own resources with philanthropic support. So again, that community element. The Hope School operated from 1925 until 1954 when it was closed as a result of school desegregation and co consolidation efforts. Girl, we could talk about that desegregation later though, <laughs> and if it really helped us or not. <laughs> One of my favorite things about coming to this museum is that I have like a mediocre level of understanding and knowledge of African American history and culture. Um, it might be like a little higher than the average person, but on the expansiveness of our culture, I consider it to be mediocre. And so I appreciate coming in here because like I always learn something new. And even seeing these things multiple times, like it takes time for it to stick. And I just love coming in here, getting new knowledge and really just like reaffirming the fact that like we are so fire and flames. Scientific racism, let's talk about it. The <laughs> inherent biological inferiority of quote unquote darker races, placing Caucasians and Western civilization above all else. The Bama things that they have done. So here we have W. Montague Cobb, anthropologist and activist. And so again, we have that community aspect, that activism aspect, and you see how those things 
not only are they pillars in our community, but they have literally, they're literally like woven into the fabric of our culture and almost like, you know, here it is in science and education. And like, we're still, you know, building community and still having to be activists. And y'all already know us in that medical industry is, you know, there's some history there. So to have, you know, us in these environments is so crucial. And covert, black and white students that side by side in a one room schoolhouse where their parents did business together, went to church together and raised barns together. Okay. I don't think anyone thought of color. We just played together. So here is probably an area where, you know, white people actually had some act right. Can't say that for everywhere. Um, here we have this, unfortunately, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep it moving. Now, girl, we coming into a tradition of activism. They have a whole room here dedicated to Mary McLeod Bethune. So shout out to her. Here, y'all already know about them boycotts. And so that is something that has been in our community. Don't buy where you can't work. During the 1930s, black activists organized protests in various cities against store owners who operated in black neighborhoods but refused to employ black workers. So you want this money, you want our money, you want our coins, but you're not going to hire us. And they probably treated us like trash when we was in there. Uh, um, Divine Nine. People often wonder where the Divine Nine is. It's in the Making a Way Out of No Way section along the back wall on L3 in case you have a Greek person in your life and they want to know. And come down to my boo, Shirley Chisholm. Muhammad Ali as an activist. What's dope about this room is that first of all, generously supported by LeBron James Foundation and Maverick Carter. But there's actually two rooms for um, Muhammad Ali. There's this section here with him as an activist and then on the other side, there's a section with him as um, an athlete. I really love this picture. And if y'all do not know, Malcolm X is my mans, okay? Now we're coming up on enterprise and you know black businesses and so we have Garrett A. Morgan doing for self yeah I like that the last section here is on the press so we have, you know, on journalism, on reporting black news, you know, of course we got Ebony Magazine. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I did. I love this section i just think it speaks to so much of our culture and it really i like the facts that it provides and the fact that it's like yo we value education we value community we value business we value faith like all these things are part of our culture and clearly have been since we were brought here and you know and though even even through slavery, even through oppression and all those things, we still found a way to create our own culture and to create our own values. Let me know what is your favorite section of the museum. And if you haven't been yet, but you want to go, let me know which section you're looking forward to seeing. <laughs>